Oh, yes, indeed, uh, Mark. Well, we're turning our attention now to you may have seen some of those reports which we did play in between uh, this topic. It's got to do with uh, immigration. Uh, we've got uh, Mr. Mohammed Babandidi here with us. He's the uh, Controller General of the Immigration Service. He joins us via Skype this morning from Abuja. Good morning, sir. And uh, Good morning. thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Well, uh, about this e-immigration, uh, we know that the president did give that uh, directive six months for uh, aliens to go ahead and uh, conclude their registration. So could you tell us where are we uh, on that at the moment? Uh, thank you so much for inviting immigration. Uh, Mr. President saw the significance of uh, having a correct data of ourselves and those who are with us. Because if you don't have correct data and you don't know who are staying with you, you will not be able to take up any strategy in terms of economy, in terms of security matters. That's why he gave an amnesty when he launched the e-migrant registration on the 12th of July. The amnesty will expire 11th of January 2020. Uh, this registration has started. It was flagged up in Abuja. I'm glad to say we have done around 3,000 something in Abuja. And surprisingly, uh, almost 35% of those who registered were staying irregularly. So when they register, we direct them to become normal if they are qualified to be normalized. I, I give you an example. If you are a citizen of a country, let's say, give you an example for a, a, you are a citizen of a country and you are doing a business which you are not supposed to do, and you came to register. We will not charge you for the offense you have done, but we will consider you as if you are applying to enter Nigeria for the first time. It means we will direct you that you cannot do this business. If you want to regularize, follow this process. If you cannot, we will remove you out of the country. This amnesty will expire in 20. 20 in January. I'm glad we are doing it state by state. We have done 10 states uh, in Nigeria, and all persons are expected to register if they enter Nigeria and stay for a period exceeding 90 days. I think this is very good because it is biometric. We also capture the picture of the such individual. And we are linking it with NIMSI gradually, which means one identity for Nigerian, one identity for our visitors. That's the system. If you would. Uh... Uh, look at the work. There is a part of this uh, arrangement that involves the governor's uh, uh, control, and uh, it's section 27 of the Nigerian Constitution. 2D says uh, the person shall be no person shall be qualified to apply for the grant of a certificate unless he satisfies the president that he as the person applying, is in the opinion of the governor of the state where he or she is uh, acceptable to the local community. Uh, that suggests that there's, there, has, there needs to be some um, cooperation with the governors of each state. How is, that, how is that working out? You are reading about citizenship. We are not talking about citizenship. Uh, we are not saying this non-Nigerians will be Nigerian citizens. That's not what we are saying. What we are saying that this non-Nigerians, uh, a Chinese citizen, or uh, Indian citizen is doing a business that he's not supposed to be doing in Nigeria. Or he has overstayed after a visit of 10 days, he has overstayed for one year. What we are saying, the amnesty only give him relief from paying penalty and deportation for him to have applied as if he's entering Nigeria for the first time. Application for citizenship is entirely different. I have seen it in the social media. A lot of uh, believe that this amnesty given to Mr. by Mr. President is a citizenship, not at all. It is neither for citizenship nor the right for foreigners to do things which they are not supposed to do. But it's an amnesty for what they have done before so that we can direct them to do the right thing. Now, that's the condition. So it's not about citizenship. Another issue that has come up recently is the closure of borders and a partial closure in some places. And, you know, a lot of people have said, you know, this is pretty much, this took them by surprise. So we have the registration on one hand and then the closure across the country. Is this related in any way? And what exactly is happening across the borders? I will not be able to give you much detail about the operation at the border. There is no border closure, but there's a border drain. And there was an announcement from the Office of the National Security Advisor. But our spokesperson for the closure is the Nigerian custom, because this operation is jointly carried out by Nigerian Immigration Service and Nigerian Customs. It is a border drain. You know very well, a safe border is a safe nation. So we are securing this border for our national interests. Those who bring goods to us, into our country, 
because they think they can make money by dumping anything in our country, we have blocked them. Those who feel they can enter our territory without travel document, without record, we have blocked them. But I'm glad to say that window has been open uh, where people can pass through these borders from six to six, uh, but they must enter with travel document and with, that, with a visa, if visa is required. So I'm sorry to say it's not a closure, it's a border drill, and Nigeria will do everything it can to protect its integrity, its border, its economy, and its people. So I'm, I'm, it's not harmful. But sometimes when there are changes, definitely it will make inconvenience to people, especially those who are at the border. Uh, but I know the National Security Advisors Office has been briefing the public on this matter. The custom has been talking about it. So it's not something that I will give detailed brief, but I think it is for the interest of Nigeria. Aside from the travel document that you, you talked about, what other things are required for any immigrants who must register, you know, under this um, amnesty program? Under this amnesty program, any person, any person, when I say any person who is not a citizen of Nigeria, must register. And what it is required for that person is that he is a citizen of another country. So it means that if you are a citizen of another country, you don't even have a passport. We can take your biometrics, we can take your data, we capture your picture and give you an advice to go to an embassy and get a passport. Then you'll be considered as if you are applying to enter Nigeria for the first time. So what is required is just your citizen. But after the amnesty, anybody who enters this territory and stayed for a period of 90 days, there is a penalty for him for not registering and there is a penalty for person who provides the accommodation. Because if you provide accommodation, because the law says accommodation, whether it is a house, a farmhouse, a hotel, you must ensure that non-Nigerian staying with you has registered. This amnesty, once it ends, will also arrest and remove any person who has not registered. So we are prepared, we are getting ready to make sure after the amnesty, all those who have not complied are removed from this country. And I think this is the best thing that has ever to the country. Does that mean that anyone who wants to register to be a uh, who wants to register under this amnesty program doesn't need any document whatsoever? Any proof? If he has document, fantastic. If you have passport, fantastic. If you have resident permit, fantastic. It is all good for you. But do not be scared that you don't have a document. Because that's the essence of the amnesty. And we're not the first people who are doing it in the world. Uh, Spain has done it. Saudi Arabia has done it. Come around and show yourself that you are a non-Nigerian, you have stayed irregular, we'll take your biometric, we'll take your picture. You can never change your identity because once we have your biometric, we have your picture, we have your data, then we'll know that you are staying irregularly. We'll advise you what to do to be regular. If you are not qualified to be regular, we'll remove you. But the issue is that you must come under any condition you are. The amnesty covers period of stay, but not other criminal activities. For example, if you are an armed robber, you are non-Nigerian, so you cannot be given the amnesty. Uh, the amnesty is only for immigration status. So do we expect the service, because in some other climes, uh, they go knocking on your door to check people's papers and ensure that everybody has complied. After this period expires, do we expect to see the service move into town and check and keep checking to see whether or not people have this? We will do everything possible. And I'm glad to say, by the end of the amnesty, who are well prepared not only to work for alone as immigration, but will work with other law enforcement to ensure that any person who is not a citizen of Nigeria who has not registered at any operation, because there will be linkage. Uh, let me tell you that this data is going to be linked with the NIMC, and there will be one identity, like the way we are doing for passport. Uh, many people thinking about the cases of embarrassment of what Nigerians are doing abroad. It's connected with identity issue. So every person who is staying in this country will have one identity number. Uh, we call it NIN number for, non for Nigerians, and God's willing, it will be MIN, migrant uh, identity number. So there will be only one number where law enforcement can put that number and see that you have a driver license, you have a resident permit, you have a bank account, you have, you know, there will be one identity. People will not steal identity, people will not abuse their stay in this country. Uh, this will be the future of security for Nigeria. In fact, let's even explore that a little further. Because, I mean, you know, time and again, we've always spoken about this when NIMC were going on with their own registration. Many still don't have their cards, by the way. So uh, give us an idea what to expect. Because if we go in to get your driver's license, we take the biometrics. We come in to do a passport registration, they get biometrics. Almost everywhere you go, the banks, they get your biometrics. Is this going to all be linked together such that when we go to all of these places, we don't need to start doing the same thing all over again? Fantastic. That's what Mr. President said in the executive order one. 
He said there is only one government. There is no need for you to submit document to immigration. You have a passport. Then you go to another place to register. Somebody will ask you, the same government agency will ask you, where is your passport? We have to send to immigration to verify. That's why there is one government and one identity. I'm glad to say that the future is that you will put only a NIL number and you will get the facilities you want. There is no need, as you said, it's a partic for citizens of Nigeria that you have a passport. When you go to get driver license, they will take your biometric again. When you go to get health insurance, we'll take your biometric again. But if there is one NIL number, which national identity is the echo head of identity in Nigeria, uh, this will reduce many things. We have already started, I'm glad to say that, uh, with the e-passport. That's why in the e-passport, we only open in two places. Next two weeks, we'll go to Kano. We have opened in Abuja, we have opened in Ikoyi. And we brought the national identity management to be in our office offices. They are in Ikoyi, they are in Abuja. When you come to get a passport, you have to get the national identity number. And when we connect you, it means you are connected to passport, you are connected to your BBN number. We are not going to read your BBN. You don't say that, but at least it is accessible. You are having one identity. And I'm glad I say we have seen many people, big politicians who come around, they have different identity with their national identity number, they have different identity in their passport, they have to harmonize. So I'm glad to say what Mr. President intent is that you would don't need to go around and give him biometric in all places because it's one government and that one government is one e-government. Is this also going to, do we expect to see this with uh, voter cards, INEC eventually? Oh, it is the same government. Uh, oh, what, nice. what we are saying is that we have authentic identity of the elite. Uh, uh, we have over 10 million biometric data and these are the people who, who drive Nigeria because they travel a lot. They are the bankers, they are the politicians, they are the judges, uh, they are the law enforcement agencies. I'm glad to say that we will synchronize. There's no need for you to be having biometric uh, different from uh, uh, national identity because elections should be connected with the real data of NIMSI so that there will be one identity. Driving license should be connected so that you have one person. So if even politicians want to create new people to vote, they cannot. Because you cannot create a person who will have a new passport, new uh, uh, driver license, a bank account. It is not possible. So the national identity system will be a one ecosystem. That's a dream. And it has already started. We started it before any other agency. Okay. And it's working. Now, now that we're talking about the e-passport, I mean, I'd like to take you up on this. I was going through the account of one of many Nigerians who has had to apply for either renewal or collection. And this is what the person says. He said according to him, that he met an officer who charged him 35,000 naira for the 32 passport, uh, page passport, but he asked to pay 30,000 naira. And we understand that this is meant to be way below that. So a lot of Nigerians still say on a daily basis, they have to go through this. So what is being done to ensure that when you get there, you pay the right amount and you get your passport without any hassle? First, I apologize to Nigerians. And I'm not here to depend any officer. Any officer who takes money for passport, we do punish, but we have challenges. The challenges we have is the issue of scarcity. You know, whenever there is scarcity in booklet, the desire to rush over issues are there. So what we are doing is government is doing everything it can at, at the highest level, at the highest level of government to make sure we are able to produce passport in Nigeria and get it as quickly as we can. That is very important. There is nothing I can do if I don't have enough booklets. The scarcity will be an issue. Secondly, we need to create an institutional system of processing of passport. That's why Mr. President launched on the 12th of July a passport processing center in Abuja, a modern passport processing center where you go, you pick a number, you wait and queue, they call you, you take, you pay online. That is a modern passport number we have, uh, center we have opened in Abuja. We are going to replicate this in every places. I'm not happy to hear when an applicant is looking for password, he is processing it through somebody and i want officers we have dismissed officers we have punished officers every day and night over this issue but i urge nigerians to try to pay online or try to prepare their trip earlier before it is late somebody will come to you who say i'm traveling tomorrow i need to renew my passport he tends to fall into the hands of the criminals so uh, i apologize for the shortages and i call on nigerians to always try to pay online but there is opportunity Buy, get the new passport. Those who are in Lagos and Abuja, get the new passport. It is 10 years old. It has a new number. People are running away from the new number and going to other places where there is no name. And gradually we are running because some of them have different identity. So they, they, are, they are scared of getting the new number put in their system. But I'm glad to say that it was a time 
will roll out everywhere and there will be only one identity, one passport, uh, and one passport that is paid online. We have tried to pay uh, cash. Uh, don't pay cash. In Ikoi, we brought a bank, GT Bank. We said, if you are coming with the cash, you insist. You know, typical our people, they'll say, ah, I'm traveling, I cannot pay online. Okay, go and pay to the bank, don't pay to the immigration officer. But when there is scarcity, you get a lot of challenge. I really apologize to Nigerians. And when government is intervening, I hope I'll be able to solve this problem before the end of this year. So uh, I know you spoke about in some of your other interviews online where I was reading up what you were talking about, us producing those passport documents here. It's going to be to our own benefit. So where are we now? Is there a scarcity of that document at the moment? No, you see, the process of production locally is a long process. You know, it's an industry. Uh, you know, it takes process to uh, bring the industry. Mr. President has taken it as his number one priority over uh, changes, and this is ongoing. I have, no, I'm not in the road to give you the details of how it is done, but it has been done. A passport will be produced locally. But I want people to understand that technology and passport, there are two different issues. We are talking about booklets. We want the booklets to be produced, but technology is around. Uh, we have... 84 stations, they are collected real-time online. I see what is happening in all the stations in the world, real-time online. We have even improved systems so that Nigerians cannot abuse. For example, the cases of lost passport. Many Nigerians used to throw away their passport. And how can we know they have lost their passport? A police report and affidavit. When they come, we give them new passport. But they have the old passport. They will start traveling with it. Now we have connected it as a lost case. May we have arrested many people at the border. You declare your passport lost, now you are traveling with it. We charge them to court. And we are uploading it now into Interpol database so that people in other parts of the world will know that that passport has been declared lost. We are doing this. We have linked identities into one. All politicians who have left office, you cannot renew your passport if you are not returning your diplomatic passport. That's the future. It's very clear. You are, you, are, you are no longer entitled to your diplomatic passport or official passport. Return it back so that you don't use it elsewhere and damage the name of Nigeria. So we have linked it. At the border, you want to cross? You cannot cross. We'll arrest and call you to bring back. Yesterday, we have test run biometric clearance system in Kano. And we are going to put it in all the airport, which means nobody, Nigerians and non-Nigerians, will enter or leave Nigeria without taking his biometric fingerprints and then his picture. Like it's done in every part of the world. So doing this will secure Nigeria better and will cut off the abuses. All those people who are caught in the US, I'm sure they had changed identity. I'm sure they have traveled with probably lost passport. Uh, I'm sure with, with, uh, because there was no NIN connection, but with NIN connection, one identity, it's going to be very easy for law enforcement globally to tackle the crimes Nigerians might uh, play. Because we must be seen as law enforcement to be helping the world to curb crime yeah. globally. That's what we are doing. All right. Uh, Walter, thank you very much. I wish you all the best. And so, uh, I mean, we're all here to help the country. So whatever we can do, by all means, let us know. And well done for the work you're doing. Thank you so much. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Mohammed Babandide, the Controller General of Immigration Service. We'll be back in a moment. Stay with us.